Howard Dushevsky has a guest in studio, former Honolulu City Council member Ann Kobayashi. Howard? All right, Joe, thank you very much. Yeah, also uh, 14 years as a state legislator, most recently with the council two years ago. We always have loved you because you've been that voice of reason. You take no guff, to put it mildly. Why not to? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you call it like it is. So my first question to you is, what needs to be done to get this state moving in a positive I, direction, get forward momentum? The, you know, we need the, the leaders that would produce that. And that's why people uh, don't vote. I'm so disappointed at the numbers of people that turn out to vote. People just aren't voting because they feel, what's the use? It's not going to make any change and everything seems to stay the same. And it's really, we've got to do something. We've got to get this state moving forward. We've got to get more affordable housing. We've got to get that rail. It's supposed to open in 2019. Mm. Then 2025, that's our whole, you know, that's the way we've been. We keep pushing things off and the stadium now and... Well, that, that brings, I was going to talk to you about rail because you have forever been a staunch critic of rail. Mm -hmm. There seems to be this almost this apathetic movement that people like, uh, we, just, uh, we just laugh already because uh, we know it's not going to happen. What, do you, what needs to be done? You, you talk about leadership. You used to be on the Senate Ways and Means Committee, too. Mm -hmm. So you, you controlled the purse strings, but it's more than just the money. It's really the will to shepherd a project through, it, true? It's the way the, it was handled. It was um, the way the contracts went out and the kind of sloppy work that was done on some of those pillars and stations and... And now we have to redo some of that. And, you know, that's, that's not free. And the, the longer we put off opening the rail, the higher the cost is going to be. Construction goes up every year, mm -hmm. and we know that. So, I don't know, we're at $12 billion now. By the time we actually open, my grandchildren are going to be paying for a long time. If you had a magic wand that you could wave and say, we need to do this, this, and this, and you've already mentioned a couple of things, affordable housing, senior housing, uh, what are the key drivers? It, it, what initiatives would you like to see not only go on the table, but get acted upon that really needs to happen to get a, us well, moving? Yeah, I think we have to clean up government and, and get our departments working properly, like DPP, if we could get those permits out there. It would help with the, with the affordable housing. It's all of this stuff that goes on within government. Um, I used to go to neighborhood boards and they complain about things and I'd say, was it a government project? Yes, well, mm. you know. So we, we've got to, to move things uh, from the beginning in the right way and get it done in the right way, um, making sure that the money is spent properly and the planning, it just, I mean, look at the stadium now. I thought the planning was going on, and now we're, it's going on again, yeah. Yeah, the governor coming at the final hour uh -huh. and saying, well, you may have the authority, the authority to build it, but I have the money, so now it's a sta standoff. And obviously our next governor, Josh Green or Duke Iona, are going to have to clean up that mess. And, and there are a lot of messes out there, so what would be your message to lawmakers, who, whoever ends up being voted into the city council, whoever our legislators and governor mm -hmm. are, uh, you've been there, you've seen it, you've done it. What would well, just what, remember, your pearls of wisdom? Yeah, when people are elected, they're elected to serve the people. So keep that in mind all the time. I remember when I first got into the Senate, Ben Caetano said, "Every day you look yourself in the mirror, and if you can look yourself in the mirror, then you're doing a good job." So vote according to the way what's needed in your community and just we need honesty we need respect for each other and for the the people out there i you know i i'm just sad that sometimes i look at our city and our i mean our state hawaii and it's changed so from before and we need to get back where people care about what's happening and really respect other people so um, I'm looking forward to, to good leaders who will bring that about. Now, your days of politics are over, right? Yes, they're over. <laughs> but yes. you're serving. You're working harder than ever. You're on eight different boards. Uh -huh. When you work on all these different boards that work with government in kind of an ad hoc way, and they do it, and, and you're not paid, and it's volunteer, what kind of uh, cohesion do you see on some of these boards that 
could and well, should be transferred know, into city and state leadership. Because the people on the boards are all, and the people in these organizations are all working so hard to um, make a really good neighborhood, a good community. And we're depending on government to help us and to lead us. And maybe all of these boards should get together and kind of make sure we're all steer, going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, this, the results of this election to see who our next leaders will be. And I'm going to be t depending on them to move us in the right direction and keep moving in the right direction. And even though you're not in government, you're kind of a voice of reason, I think, that could still continue to hold people accountable. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I, I feel like you can, at least. <laughs> I mean, and, and finally, just, uh, you know, economically speaking, you know, coming out of COVID, the, the visitors are returning, not as many, but spending more. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a positive feel for the future of our islands? I mean, we, we need to have that positivity. Yeah, we need that balance. There are a lot of local people who are not happy with the way tourism is happening. Um, so we need a good balance and we need to make sure that everyone um, kind of benefits from if the, a lot of tourists are going to come, the locals also have to receive some kind of benefit from that. And um, yep, we got to keep moving forward in the right way. <laughs> Well, I'm going to be talking to Mufi Hanneman a little bit oh, later. Yeah. yeah, the CEO yeah, of the Hawaii he, Lodging and Tourism. So he has he'll, some great ideas. Yeah. yeah. And so we'll, we'll stay tuned to Kato and two tonight. We'll hear what he has to say, and okay. then maybe we'll circle back and get your counterpoint if there is one. Sure. But Anne, we really appreci I appreciate all your years of service, oh, and thank, thank you for joining you. us tonight. Thank you. Thank right. you very much. I feel like coming home when I come to town well, too. Yeah. Well, good. We'd love to have you. You're welcome to come anytime. Thank you so <laughs> thank much. You. Joe, thank you. Thank you.